is that I never really know when it, it's streaming. So we'll it just hammer streaming. for a bit. It seems like it's streaming. It says yeah. so here, uh, uh, meaning is now live streaming on YouTube. Um, and then when it does a little thing on the screen, that, that's generally when I'm like, all right, I, I think we're there. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm that You're looking at Keith Von Sprecken. I'm Chuck Roy up here in the top corner of your screen. Uh, Stacy Sanders is with me uh, from Elevating Connections. Uh, 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 that's Stacy right there. I better uh, spotlight you and then right. Uh, okay. And then um, back to the shared content. Um, everybody, this is introduction to virtual event production. Uh, Stacy has cool virtual events that I've been helping to produce. So we put together a little class called Intro to Virtual Event Production, and we'll walk you through how I produce uh, virtual events with people like Vaughn and such. Um, so, uh, not, uh, no, I'm dying here. Um, Stacey, I didn't mean to switch back to you. I've got uh, Gladys here, uh, our cashier, and we want to make sure Gladys, uh, uh, you know, is the one who helps us raise money for Elevating Connections. We put our tickets on sale to Elevating Connections. And um, we, she also likes to welcome our VIP customers at my comedy shows. So our VIP customers include Stacey Sanders, um, who's a wonderful lady of Elevating Connections. Um, oh, thanks, Chuck. Right. I'll, I've, <laughs> finally, as I'm fidgeting around, I figured out how to unspotlight you and put the spotlight back onto me. Uh, <laughs> and now we get to your slide. I'm, you know, we're off it's, to a virtual. It's, it's good. It's fine. It's a Monday, and we're here at Introduction yeah. to Virtual Event Production. Stacy has a group called Elevating Connections, uh, and they uh, have a terrific mission that I think I want her to talk about tell you a little bit about, and um, you know, we're gonna talk about her events as well today. So Stacy, can you tell folks at home what Elevating Connections is? Uh, happy to. So happy Monday, everybody. Um, so Elevating Connections, we're celebrating our fifth year of being in existence. I'm the founder and executive director, and we started Elevating Connections for two reasons. One, we reunite siblings separated in foster care, because that's a thing. Um, kids are uh, suffer abuse and neglect at the hands of their parents or caregiver, and then get removed from the home. And for a variety of reasons, they have to be separated from one or more of their siblings. And so we're not okay with that. We understand why it happens, but we're not okay with that. So we offer programming year round, summer camp, advocacy, education to say, hey, we need to get kids back together. And if we can't get them back together, we're gonna do all sorts of activities to support the sibling relationship um, and Chuck, and Colorado Comedy Shows helps us do that a lot, particularly this year, holy cow, in the land of COVID. And then the other piece that we do is youth voice. So we work with older youth who've emancipated or are about to emancipate out of the foster care system to find their voice and find their community. So through spoken word, song, art, and this fall, we're adding comedy to the mix so youth can learn how to use their voice in a new way, but it helps them stand up for each for themselves and then connect with their community through all of those uh, artistic efforts. Um, but then we also work on connecting them through literal connection of the internet and paying their phone bills and giving them a, a tablet so that they can have connection because during the pandemic, we learned really quick that the kids can't go to the library for free because it's closed. So they don't have internet connection. So we've been providing those kinds of things uh, due in large, large part to our partnership with uh, Colorado Comedy Shows and Chuck Right. Well, I'm glad you did that. Uh, and folks, what we're talking about here in this class is how did I, you know, work with Stacy to put on her virtual poetry jam and put on a successful fundraising event. And then Sunday and Monday nights when I have comedy shows, we sell tickets and donate a piece of the tickets to Stacy's charity. When we do private events and corporate parties, we donate a piece of the fee to Stacy's charity. And we talk about her charity because we find the mission to be important. And so we've included all of that in this class because, uh, you know, at the Poetry Jam, we learned what if one of these kids wants to go on and put on one of their own Zoom poetry shows or a hip hop show? Well, we wanted to find out what would be the bare minimum they need to know about putting on events. So that's what we're going to talk about today. 
Uh, that's why Stacy's with us, um, and because she's awesome and her charity is really cool. Um, and so let's dive right into introduction to virtual event production, and we'll visit the Comedy 101 Virtual Learning Center. That's my school. Um, I told you last week that I'm the one who uh, mows the lawn. I also do the weeding, so um, you'll notice not a single weed in that grass, not even clovers. Uh, right? right, so uh, uh, we'll cruise across the campus. We'll talk today about virtual events and we're gonna go through the five steps of production. I'll remind you what they are real quick. And I'm gonna show you the blog articles on my website, comedy101.chuckroy.com. You go there, you read the blog article. These videos are in the blog article sort of works as a pretty cool cycle and you're gonna uh, learn as we learn steps one through five of the five steps of production. Step one pre is to gather information. So uh, we learned that last week, we put together a general information sheet. Step two is this week and it's virtually effective pre-production is what we'll be working on today. So we'll talk about our upcoming events and what the Stacy and someone like myself or Vaughn need to do uh, to prepare for uh, an event. Uh, we'll get into step three for a little bit next week, uh, producing successful uh, virtual events. So step three is production. Step four is uh, closing out the show, post-production. And I always think it's important to say thank you. So sometimes I just call step four, thank you. So that way it reminds me to say thank you to the audience. And then step five, evaluation of your success. We're going to talk about metrics and things mm -hmm. like return on investment artistic satisfaction, did you like what you were doing? Uh, is there a way for us to either measure that or ask that uh, so we can determine, are we happy with our event and get us on a path to happiness with our event? We're going to produce the virtual pub theater battles. That's the mission of these classes. So virtual pub theater battles are one of my crazy little ideas. Um, and also the idea of little Annie Jokely. Uh, that's our virtual event character uh, and service person. Look, Annie's an avatar. If you're a teacher nerd like me, uh, she represents a youth at some of Stacy's events that I thought like some of these kids might want to go on to produce their own show. So uh, we hope that they can see themselves in a character like Annie and her strong desire to put on virtual pub theater battles. What are those? probably drinking and probably some theater. We're gonna find out, everybody. Um, if you wanna follow along, go to my website, comedy101.chuckroy.com. We'll take a look at those articles in a little bit. Uh, just cruising across the lawn, wanna double check. Sometimes those weeds sneak up, you know, so uh, we'll make sure the lawn is looking okay. It's getting jiggy with it out on the lawn and we'll get over to, looks like my writing room, wanna get into my office. This is where I ponder lesson plans and where we uh, write the apocalypse comedy show and where I store and keep my Kennedy Center Award for Innovative Teaching. Uh, located center on the table, blocking the gorgeous view of the Rockies and <laughs> also lighting up my life with <laughs> award-winning innovative teaching thing. How am I an award-winning teacher? Let's find out. It's because I have this cool office. Look at my, this is where, <laughs> If you want to meet with me one on one, we can just hang out in my office. It's uh, pink. What do you think? Uh, you know, uh -huh. and then I like the yellow chairs. It, uh, they work better in the spring, but I haven't figured out a fall and winter color yet. So I just keep the yellow and uh, plan less events. This is my classroom uh, right here at the Comedy 101 Virtual Education Center. So as we get into class today, um, let's take a deep dive into step two, uh, virtually effective pre-production. Again, you can follow along in the article uh, and this video is gonna be posted at my website, Comedy 101, because we're gonna go over the problems stated in that article and try to solve them here. Um, so in the five steps of virtual event production, Annie's got a wicked awesome idea. She wants to put on virtual pub theater battles. So Vaughn, I'll catch you up. Like, what did we do last week? Those the virtual pub theater battles. And Vaughn, you're an improvising comedian. So virtual pub theater battles are like perfect for all of your skills. It's like a mm -hmm. play and you know, an awful lot like, and 
they can be written sort of like a sketch meets improv. And next week, we're going to go further into how to write one and put one together. Uh, I've got some cool guests. Uh, Stacy will be out for a week. I don't know what we're going to do, but uh, <laughs> either way, we'll, right, thank <laughs> right, um, we'll be okay. Uh, so just real quick, want to review where we're at in step one. We gathered information. So we want to, uh, first, we better take a break. Stacy, I thought, Chef Mark Scapone of the Comedy 101 Virtual Event Center wanted to send you a glass of wine. Um, I know Thank you're you. taking care of your mother and wine is on the way when you get home. So yeah. why not have a virtual glass of wine? You can Thank have you. as many of those as you like before you drive. That's the cool part of that. Yes. So we'll split up some of our tasks today with a little glass of wine. Uh, so completing a general information sheet. Uh, we talked about it last week. All we want to do is collect sort of the who, what, when, where, and why of an event. So here's Annie. She gathered uh, the title of her event. She wasn't quite sure the date or the time, and she guessed these are the ticket prices. And we went over it last week. She wrote a good description of her event. Um, but now we better just relax for a second, have some wine chill, maybe a little snack, and then uh, we should get on to some cool pre-production. Uh, so pre-production is the part where we complete everything necessary for a good event. So in step two of pre-production, we're doing uh, a bunch of activities. Uh, so let's take a look at what Annie thinks we should do for pre-production. Um, set up a Zoom. That sounds like a good plan, right? Um, we're gonna do a virtual show. So we gotta set up a Zoom, uh, event right ticketing, and uh, outline the event. There's three more tasks that she's gotta do, but I wanna put a pause right there and loop it in uh, Stacy for a second and just find out uh, where you're at with your event. And if you think these are agreeable things or achievable things for youth in your program to be able to do. Um, so what about setting up a Zoom? Is that easy to do? There's some instructions in the article, but uh, this isn't a one hour dedicated to how to do that. But mm. from your perspective, Stacey, is that something easy to do? It is easy to do. I'm not gonna lie, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And now I'm doing it all the time. Um, so yeah, it's very easy to do. You can Set up meetings whenever you want. I've got the app on my phone, so I set up a lot of my meetings from my phone or my events from my phone. Wow. Okay. So you really can even set them up from your phone. I, I do that from the desktop, but uh, yeah. you say you do that from the phone. Yeah. So a lot of the things get set up. Like I set up the, the virtual poetry jam from my phone. Okay. Um, so you can do those kinds of things. There's some advanced settings that's a little easier to do on uh, a laptop or a desktop or laptop. But most everything I need to do, even for my virtual events, the app will take care of. Okay. How about a young person, you know, like the youth you work with, uh, challenges, you know, might not have access to a phone or might have a, you know, phone from a pay-as-you-go carrier for something like that. Are they able to Zoom and do you think they're able to set up a free event, 45 minutes and sell tickets for 10 bucks? Is it? crazy? It's not. Um, first of all, one of the reasons it's not is because the youth I work with are super smart and super savvy. Nice. Um, so there's that. Um, but it's not, uh, particularly if, you know, if they're stuck, elevating connections will help them um, right. with technology piece. But no, they, um, they can do it from whatever device they have and um, we can help them get hooked up to the internet if they need to. Okay, perfect. So uh, we'll get back to where Annie's list is because I think we found that those uh, few are agreeable. I don't know that I asked you about Eventbrite ticketing, but uh, yeah. I think almost as simple as, a, or maybe one step more than a Zoom because it involves bank accounts or yeah. figuring out how to get paid. But what do you think there, Stacy? You know, I think it's pretty easy to use. Most people are familiar with Eventbrite. So the setup piece of it's pretty easy. Uh, for my upcoming large fundraiser, I have an events company that does it for me. Wow. Um, but Eventbrite tickets, I think is easy to use. And it's what's also important is it's easy for the customer to use. 
Okay. Um, and so then uh, outlining the event, um, uh, I'm, Vaughn, I'm going to start to loop you in here for a second. So uh, uh, one, I want to find out from you, Vaughn, in your world as an improviser or improv person, uh, you know, do you set up shows ever? And are you looking at something like Zoom and wondering uh, how can I assemble a show? You perform on my shows often. So, uh, you, you know, nothing says you got to be the guy who sets it up uh, hmm. and does, does the Zoom and such. But does it interest you? Can you reflect on that for a moment? Um, it seems easier to set up a Zoom event than a real event. I I got scared away from producing because I've seen how stressful it is to do like an in-person event. I decided early that I wanted to perform more than produce. Right. Uh, it does seem about as easy as figuring out a new app though. So like, yeah, I don't, I don't see why anyone would have too much trouble with it. Right, and, and, you know, so like for those who are following along might be watching in any one of my classes like where I teach that uh, students are sort of assigned to watch these <laughs> videos. Uh, the, there's the other side, like here you are a person who frequents the shows, uh, it, you know, the emails today we were discussing corporate events, uh, you know, weekend events, New Year's Eve, uh, and going over your avails and such. And then you've offered to attend this. Like, isn't it sometimes like, hey, just you, you got to participate, like you got to find a way to participate. If you're not going to be the one to set up everything, maybe you just got to show up sometimes and support. That's an awful lot like you. You show up at a <laughs> lot of comedy shows. Sure. Or, so can you reflect on that for a minute or maybe offer some advice to people who might be involved in event production, but they're, they're not the type to be going like, I'm going to set up the Zoom. They're there to be going, I'm going to be on stage. Put me in your one pint play. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, I don't know. So like in real events, it's always just, if you can show up at early and be an extra pair of hands, that's always nice, you know, like, um, so I know performing at certain venues, just like help people carry in the speakers. Um, I have some background in like theater tech. So if they're having trouble with a soundboard or what plugs into what I can do that. Um, and as far as virtual events, I would guess, um, I, I was trying to show up a little bit early. Um, so like we've gone over, like I've done voiceover work, right? For you guys, it's good right. to show up early. Mm -hmm. If you've got any cues, if you have any questions about what order you're gonna go up in, um, just so there's no surprises, it is, so yeah, even if you don't wanna set anything up, you do want to um, sort of be involved in the setup so that if anything changes on the fly, if, and that's, I don't know, maybe the improviser in me where it's not, stand up is nice if you can get up there and it's a good crowd and everything goes exactly as you plan it to. Yeah. Um, I, the improviser in me says, don't ever, ever trust that to happen. Like be ready right. if anything pandemic. goes wrong. You know, yeah. it's a pandemic, we're on Zoom. For, it, it, it's, it's gonna require some improvisation mm -hmm. and such. So, so yeah. I'm glad we got a chance to speak about that. Um, and so now I want to get back to Annie and I want to keep this on screen, but hopefully bounce between you all and, and just start again with you, Vaughn, because as an improviser and then sometimes we write stuff, you write uh, uh, the voiceovers, sometimes you come back, like we've even gotten enough time sometimes to maybe have the team talk about the voiceovers together and such. <laughs> right? So uh, um, do you, do you outline, say your stand-up show, would you suggest somebody outline their show if Annie wants to put on virtual pub theater? What would an outline, I'm assuming you're gonna be like, yes, outline. Maybe, what would you put in an outline if you were Annie? Um, so you definitely want your, uh, really just the order that everything goes in. You wanna know step-by-step. Step. I mean, there's usually pretty clear transitions. So if you're dealing with something where there's a series of performers, you're gonna have your run order, which is just in order, everyone who's gonna be up and uh, how much time they're gonna be on. Um, it's nice too, if you can rehearse beforehand. So in like, so I've seen some of your events where you have the little animations and sort of like banter, um, which is kind of off the cuff, but it's also kind of, uh, you, you wanna plan it to an extent. You wanna know how long it's gonna take. You don't wanna just kind of ramble on forever. Right. So you want to, uh, yeah, so that's a good thing to have in an outline is, yeah, even if it's like five minutes free form, you know, we just, we just banter, we just uh, hang out and talk for a bit, but you want to have a rough idea. Um, if you're doing something on Zoom, sometimes, I, I mean, you can have your phone, you can cheat, like, it's not like stand up, you can't just keep looking at your phone and stand up and be like, okay, I've done four minutes, I have one minute left, you know, like you can, right. you can actually, and, and I have done this where I've got, you know, my phone next to my computer and I'm like, I know exactly how much time I have left. 
So it's yeah. actually a little bit easier. Um, and so, yeah, so as far as, let's see, so outlines, yeah, you wanna know, um, I, I would say keep it pretty strict. You wanna know in order how long everything's gonna take and in what order it's gonna go. Um, ideally, and you're good about this, you wanna send that out to your people beforehand mm -hmm. so that everybody, at least they don't have that excuse, like they know what the plan was. And then if something goes wrong, you know, like we, maybe we have to skip something, um, the animation, whatever, couldn't work. Uh, some audio didn't work, something can always go wrong. So you gotta know like, okay, we had to cut this part, but we know exactly what we go to next. Right. Um, and how much time now we have to fill because that thing didn't work. And how often does your outline change, Vaughn? You, you know, when you start putting a show, does it always stay in that order? Or do you suddenly determine this piece has to go elsewhere in the show? Well, so I don't know about uh, in production. So like for stand up, for set lists, it changes very frequently. Like just last night, I had a show where I had planned on doing a different uh, like I had 10 minutes and it was exactly 10 minutes as I practiced, but I knew that it could change. And it did. Like I was, you know, I talked to the crowd a bit, like some stuff was happening in the environment. And I couldn't just like let it go. Like someone yelled and I was just like, hi, you know, I had to acknowledge it. You can't just like pretend that it didn't happen uh, while you're performing. So I was like, well, okay, I know about how much time I lost on that. And then I knew how much time I had to cut. And after some practice, like I was able to do that quickly in my head. Um, so yeah, things, I mean, some people, I think people have it differently with different personalities. Some people want to plan it, you know, to a T and they will not deviate. I, I don't suggest that at all because like life is, life is chaotic. Why wouldn't comedy or, you know, whatever event you're going to do stuff just happens. So I right. think it's good to try and be flexible. So I'm going to try and meet you halfway there. Like I agree, like people have so many varieties of how they approach this. And if you're an over planner, I guess, go ahead and make your outline as you know, complex as you need it to be, but please hear what Vaughn is saying. Mm -hmm. Expect the need for flexibility. And so a little outline of an event helps. And uh, there's some tips and advice on how to do that over in the blog articles. But, uh, three more things that I think you need to do are invite the audience. Stacy. I'm going to ask you about that in a second, as, yeah. well, as well as a screen presentation. And Vaughn, I'm going to get to you about voiceovers and then cast and crew and such. What does that mean? Um, uh, I don't want to take a deep dive into inviting the audience. And I'm going to just jump off the, uh, for those of you watching or whatnot, um, I'm going to put the list away so we can just chat real, you know, between us and all. Uh, Stacy, uh, uh, how do you invite an audience for things like what you have coming up? is celebrate and it's an annual thing uh, uh the elevating <coughs> excuse me the elevating connections annual fundraisers so right. now how do you invite people to that um so <clears throat> with social media and email we do not do any mailers of any kind so a lot of fundraisers they send out a whole bunch of mail i don't have that kind of budget or that kind of time so um social media um it's who you know and then who they know and email. So it's, it's how we do that. And we've built our audience and our support network over the last five years. And so my, my social media and my email list is a lot bigger than it was five years ago. Um, and um, yeah. just to ask a question that gets it back to the youth uh, that you yeah. represent and serve. Vaughn, you know, we talk about this. Uh, uh, and so uh, the youth might be watching or students in my class. Um, what do you think, Stacy, that the youth we know they know about social media, but right. when someone is afraid, and Vaughn, I'd love for you to speak to this after Stacy. but when someone is afraid of inviting people, uh, yeah. let's talk about what are those feelings when, a, when someone is new to shows and going like, what can cause somebody to be, a lot of people who are especially promoters can't even grasp it. They're like, mm -hmm. what do you mean you don't want to invite everybody? Um, right. I'm sometimes the very opposite. There's just three of us here, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I can't in promotion. Uh, so what about, how can you speak to say a young person in your organization who might be scared of who to invite? And what do they, what do they got to do to sort of overcome that fear and start inviting people? So I think I very much struggled with that when Elevating Connections started and who was I going to invite and who was really going to want to pay to come help us raise money. So I got over that um, for the most part.
because my mission is important. So for the youth listening to this, um, what's your purpose? Who do you want to hear your voice and see your talent and, and, and hear what you have to say? And, and I can assure you, people want to hear what you have to say or see your art or hear your songs and whatever it is that you wanna to give to the world. Um, and the only way they're gonna do that is if you say to them, come see me and that's okay. Not everybody's gonna say yes, but a lot of people are going to say yes. And so if you have 20 people in the audience for your first show, that's fantastic because that's 20 more people than you would have had if you were sitting in front of your mirror just telling your jokes or sharing your story. Right, no, well said, Stacy. thank you. Uh, Vaughn, uh, uh, yourself, um, does, it, it, does it make you feel good or bad when it's time to invite people to a show promoting? How does that work for you? Um, so I, this is probably something I should be better at. I, I am not very aggressive in my promotion. I'm not, uh, my main strategy, uh, not just like in comedy, but in life is to be enthusiastic about what I'm doing to the point that it rubs off on other people. Um, so it's like, yeah, if you're, if you're worried about people judging the thing that you love, like if you're, I mean, if you're passionate enough to put on an event and you're worried that people are going to judge you for that, they, they might not be your best friends. I don't know. Like, you know, if this is something that you really want to do and they're just like, oh, that's lame. It's like, do you care? I mean, cause you want to do this. This is your, yeah. So I, and that's what I, I guess hope for. And it's something you have to kind of build over time to build that confidence, build that enthusiasm. Um, it does take some time, but just the more you can live a life that you are happy to, you know, like you're just very, very happy to live, the more people are going to want to crowd around that. And be a part nice. of it. So wow. yeah. I like the way you said that. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 again, it's not a class on promotion, but, uh, it, it is a class that can expand. So, you know, full of next year, maybe we're back at this part and really taking a deeper dive into pr promotion. Um, but, just real quick, I do want to like, yeah. like don't ditch all your friends because they don't show up to your first poetry reading. I'm not saying that, <laughs> but you know, right. but right. also, but like they can still be good friends if they're not interested in that one area of your life. Yeah. But like you will find a bunch more people who are super interested in the same things you are, the happier and more enthusiastic you are about it. So don't, don't be afraid to kind of, take a step into the void, you know, um, you're, it's, there is something there waiting for you. Like there are people who are interested. Yeah, uh, you just gotta get out and find them. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a way to invite people. Of course, there's like fear of missing out. That's one way, or there's a way, mm -hmm. I like your method, Vaughn, and say, I wanna be a little more positive and attract people that way. And I think we've tried to walk more of that line with our comedy shows. Because right now, fear of missing out, like you're gonna miss it and anxiety and panic, it's like, I don't know if that's the best marketing tool. Oh, it's actually, it is a really good marketing tool. Right? Marketing tool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, positivity is, is one end, but there's absolutely, I mean, think of all the advertising we see every day. You're going to miss out, limited time offer. It's, I, don't, I wouldn't mean to short sell that. That's a very effective. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, it, it yeah. super effective. Um, so speaking of effective, um, this is what I want to try and get to today uh, between Stacy, Vaughn, and myself. A little conversation, uh, is, is, odds are a lesson I'm gonna revisit in other videos and articles, how to write clear instructions to achieve a task. Uh, so we have shows to produce and we've gone over a giant list of things. Uh, and if you follow along in the, the blog article, you'll see that uh, little Annie Jokely gets a case of the was gunners. Uh, she was going to go do some wardrobe. She was going to rehearse the scene. She was going to go try on some makeup ideas. She was going to try some dance moves and was going to, was going to. She has all these things she wants to do. So how does she organize it and prioritize them? So I want to teach you some tricks to writing uh, clear instructions for your event. First, we better take a little wine break, get Stacy relaxed. Uh, Thank you. Stacy, I also thought some fruits, you know, grapes would uh, yeah. know, help uh, set the tone. And uh, yeah. now we're going to focus on writing clear instruction. I've got my wine, so I'm ready. Right. You've probably heard of smart goals. We're going to yeah. see in a minute how this is practically the same thing. Clear instructions are going to involve something like an action. What is it you need to do? we're probably gonna involve some sort of quantifying or qualifying, okay? And we'll talk, if that if that went flying past you, we'll talk about that in a second. 
we're going to try and write a due date and we're going to try and write an like who's responsible so that's all in one set of clear instructions so let's remember what annie needed to do she has the virtual pub theater battle she wants to put tickets on sale and if you're following along in the blog article she can't put the tickets on sale because she doesn't know the date yet. So she's going to have to determine the date and time and uh, uh, find out how to get the, the, that done so she can get the virtual pub theater battles built. Um, so she writes uh, a clear and uh, effective piece of instruction. I want to take a look at it uh, on screen it, in a little bit bigger font so everybody can follow along. Uh, I'll read it with you. And to help you read, I think we should... Uh, <laughs> sorry, the, it's time to follow the Bouncing Kennedy Center Award <laughs> to help us read along. Um, so take a look here uh, at the clear instruction. By Thursday at 3 p.m., right? Notice what, Stacy. can I sort of ask you to give up my little secret here. What have I done right away by saying Thursday at 3 p.m.? Um, besides setting a deadline and making Yeah, that's it. Right, all I've done yeah. is set a deadline, right? Sounds out super easy, yeah. Uh, Thursday at 3 p.m., Annie's trying to tell herself what is she gonna do. So by yeah. Thursday at 3 p.m., and we're looking for, so there you are up at 3 p.m. And then we wanna find out who's responsible. So who's going to do something by 3 p.m.? Uh, look, Annie's going to do it. And what is she going to do? So uh, Annie is the responsible party. And she's going to update the general information sheet. Super easy but important task. She yeah. didn't know the date or the time. And once she finds out what that is, she's got to, or she should keep track and update her general information sheet. And... I think there's just one little set of tasks left um, with the agreed upon date and time for the virtual pub theater battle. So uh, all Annie's trying to do is write clear instructions for herself so she can get the job done. And then me, I'm just trying to hold on to my Kennedy Center <laughs> Award. Uh, uh, so it is for Gile. Um, that's in Italian. So uh, that was our job was to write a clear and effective production task. I, I'm gonna go back to it for a second, Stacy. Um, uh, yeah. you. What do you think? Is that a clear and effective production task? Uh, yeah. yeah. Straightforward, easy to understand. If you have to ask for help, somebody can read that and be like, okay, this is what Annie needs. So that's how I can help, yeah. Right, so that's what we want to do is be able to write a, a, a piece of instruction that anybody else can follow along on. So that way, if you're not the one who's going to be filling out the task that right. the other person knows they're responsible for it, when is it due and what is it uh, that you want done? Uh, so, right. uh, that's uh, that part, yeah, I think we're, we're cruising along and uh, just want to review. I think we're getting closer to the ending. Um, probably time for just a little bit more wine, right? Um, I mean, yeah. Right. I, I want to get back to. Uh, it, I do see that it's wine time, Stacy. So uh, I'm gonna. I was wondering. So thank you. Whew. Back to uh, the clear and effective instructions, and so now we know how to do that for things like your event celebrate the, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what goes on in the event. First, we better have some wine. Yeah. Um, I thought, you know, maybe I'd have a glass. And then I was also like, this is getting a little too romantic for a business meeting. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and I noticed the candle, sure. yeah. right? The candles are lighting the ceiling on fire. So uh, <laughs> speaking of lighting the world on fire, uh, what I like to do during our shows and uh, especially during this, is take a moment to talk about elevating connections uh, uh, again. So Stacy, can you tell me a little bit more about elevating connections and how your virtual events are helping you fundraise this year? Absolutely. So because of the pandemic, like everybody, we had to pivot, um, which we are continuing to do. Everything we do is about connection, 
it's in our name. And so we really had to think about how can we connect with the youth that we serve and the community that supports them through this screen and through Zoom because um, we still need to connect with them. And so that's the challenge, but we seem to have found some ways to do that by um, engaging the youth in, in conversation and asking them how things are going, but also having activities. And the benefit of that is instead of canceling our poetry jam, which is what I was going to do until the youth said to me, Stace, we still need to do this. So we switched it to virtual. Um, and so with Chuck's help, we put on a really great, I mean, a really great event that was not flawless, but it was amazing. So letting go of the fact that um, there is no such thing as a perfect event, but uh, we made it out of it at the end and oh boy, did we. So not only did we, um, raise more money than we've ever raised before at that event, uh, which is huge. But more youth and a larger audience was able to hear the youth that we that were performing that night. And I even had some youth because we were doing Zoom outside the Metro Denver area that were able to join us because we had to be, we had to use a new, a new um, modality. So that's kind of cool. And so when we go back to whatever the new normal is going to be, um, we'll have a version of of this too. So virtual, th this is always going to be part of our programming, even when we're back together in, in person. Right. Because it does op open up some opportunities um, for anybody who wants to use it. So for the youth that this class is targeting, um, this is a great way to reach out to your friends and who don't live in the Denver metro area or live ne or near you. Right. Um, so your reach can actually be bigger. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're playing academic bingo at home, uh, we've said modalities. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a $3 word right there. Uh, yeah. Nice job, Stacy. Stacy, just want to point out one of your virtual events is, uh, uh, or that our virtual events are helping you with the birthday party uh, for yeah. the youth. And uh, uh, events like ours, especially the Poetry Jam and such, helped you raise more money than you ever have. And yeah. we are continuing to help you raise money by doing things like having our virtual catering and event staff include a donation to you when we book yeah. a private event. That's Chef Mark Scapone. Uh, he's absolute talent and wants to remind you uh, we donate 10%. If you book your virtual event through Colorado right. Comedy Shows, we donate 10% to Elevating Connections. So we want to yeah. thank you guys for doing that. And thanks to Stacey Sanders. Uh, there's more to come, but we, we do take a break and do some VIP gifts. So Stacey, I got you this just for attending. Oh. Come on. I got you this just for Beautiful. attending. Uh, whole little uh, cabin writing and thinking room. Mm -hmm. So it includes nice. the wood cabin, the sofa, uh, the fresh flowers, and uh, I think that's quartz rock. Not quite sure, but uh, yeah, looks to, good. So uh, feel free, enjoy that. Uh, oh. Chef also sent some donuts. Why not? Uh, and then I wanted to get you a car, and then I think there was a miscommunication <laughs> with uh, the virtual events team because they got you a car, but it goes up and down ski slopes. So. Uh, <laughs> I hope that will get you somewhere. Uh, so if you want to donate direct to Elevating Connections, go to elevatingconnections.org. Um, Stacy, uh, I'm going to wrap up this part of the class. We're going to talk about Canva in a second. Um, but I'm going to quickly uh, try and show folks the articles that uh, I've been writing over um, at Comedy 101, and so forgive me a moment. I think I'm able to show you. Yep, so now you're seeing uh, my website. This is where the video you're watching is going to end up. Uh, so uh, Comedy 101, and these are where I'm storing my free online classes. So virtual intro to virtual event production, you click on that, and that'll take you to the front page. Right, and you get started right away learning about the five steps of production and uh, we get you right into making your virtual information sheet, sheet and then look about, you know, as you cruise, check out the articles, um, you can see where the YouTube videos pop in and uh, that's how you begin to learn. Follow these case studies, that's where we learn about little Annie and you get start to get the clues and hints that you need to 
solve like what Annie's up to. Uh, clicking is learning. You click on stuff and you learn some more. Green is writing. So there's a generally a writing challenge with each lesson. And then blue is to work on your virtual media kit, which we're going to work on a, a little bit today. Stacy, using Canva, which I believe yeah. you use as well. Um, I do. So uh, I should continue the tour here. Um, here's step one, getting virtual, getting started with your virtual event. We recorded that last week. Um, so uh, look, Stacy, this is the video we recorded last week. Uh, so the one hour lesson is right in there, how to write your general information sheet. Uh, awesome. Tips and details are in here. You can follow along uh, to virtual pub theater battles and how does Annie do her work. There's more details here in the articles. And then last week we wanted, I think people struggle writing the short description. Um, mm -hmm. And it's how often you have to write one. So uh, I covered that just yeah. a little bit. How does Annie write a description? You click and you learn. Uh, she writes her short description. I, I got to hide that from you. You, you got to click <laughs> on that. Um, and then we work on, in blue on the virtual event media kit. Um, here's your article for today. This, uh, this video is going to end up right here, everybody. So where did I get all of today's uh, ideas and such? Uh, creating an outline for your event. We talked about that. So there's some tips there for what to do, writing a script, just a couple of tips as to who you want to write them for, how to set up a Zoom meeting, watch the video. It's not that hard. You heard Vaughn and Stacy, um, but the video should help you. And go to Zoom's website. Don't go to me for how to run a Zoom. Go to Zoom's website and learn from them. They have pretty friendly videos uh, and it, you got to be patient. Trust yourself. Takes If it scares you, take a walk and then come back to, uh, that's what I got to do sometimes. So how to set up an online event in Eventbrite, watch that video. Uh, I tried to summarize it a little bit here. Um, Stacy, we use the PowerPoint yeah. to effect. Um, do you think that's something you want for the Celebrate event? Uh, do you want uh, that style of apocalypse stuff or where do you want slides with more impact will you be using a slideshow at all do you think um we're gonna be doing a combination of stuff um and definitely going to be having some impact slides that i can start working on any day now sure. um, yeah, right we all could yeah. so you, you know yeah. but right now it's just ideating right I, it's the first time yeah. i've asked you so now we know mm -hmm. maybe some slides for that kind of mm -hmm. a show um vaughn uh, you oftentimes will do voiceovers our, over our slides. So we'll show a picture and then yeah. Vaughn will do a voice. And that is pretty funny. So that gets it cool for the theater. Like if you're trying to put on something theatrical or uh, liven up your meeting, you, you know, uh, it, we talked about inviting the audience. This is where if I ever decide to write more tips or put a video, probably go right there. Staff and the crew for your event. Uh, I make some notes. You need a host and a co-host. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Budgets. We'll talk about more. They, I think in step four, for, we'll talk about box office and a box office report. And then we did talk about promotion earlier. Eventbrite mm -hmm. has plenty of videos, blog articles, and whatnot. That's where I started learning uh, about that. And then, of course, you need your KPI, key performance indicators. Yeah. No, you don't. But uh, for uh, someone like me who uh, teaches at a prestigious yeah. community college in the city of Denver, um, where we work on things like this, we want to uh, try and help you learn some of the basic box office key performance indicators, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you like moms and dads are always like, get a day job. Well, tough luck. We're going to learn key performance indicators and prove uh, things like our gross profit margin. Um, attendee satisfaction. Did people like your event? We want to know. Did you like your event? We want to know. And then here we talked about uh, the case of the Wes Gunners. So you can find out what Annie did there. Uh, writing clear instructions. This is where I got all that information in the video. And now we get to here. Uh, making a media kit. Uh, so uh, Stacy, things like a logo, do you have a logo mm -hmm. for your event? Yeah, so we have the Elevating Connections just standard logo and then I make, we create a uh, logo for every event that we have. Okay. Um, so, well, for every 
fundraising event that we have. Our um, virtual poetry jam has the same logo every year, but yes. So right, right. the logo is a story, it tells your story a little bit um, of what you're doing. So when you're creating your logo and Canva is fantastic for that, um, can help out with that. I did my celebrate one on Canva um, and just thinking about what do you want your logo to tell you? Right, so let's about see you. how that happens, right? Uh, yeah. You type logo here. Right, Vaughn, have you ever canvassed? I think I we've talked about this in the past. Uh, I have never used it, but looking at it, I'm probably gonna. So, oh, great for, oh, this is perfect for artists. Uh, oh, yeah. This at the uh, wonderful and uh, uh, prestigious community collage in the heart of Denver. Uh, students from introduction to the entertainment industry uh, who got to pick this up. I, uh, somebody, yeah. uh, uh, my dean asked me to go to a conference and I learned about synchronous teaching, which is Zoom, uh, and then uh, uh, mm -hmm. somebody else showed me Canva at that conference, and so um, oh, you, yeah. you, students are able to do this. Stacy, your youth or, uh, youth from your event are able to do, or I'm sorry, from Elevated yeah. Connections, they just click in here, a free account, and you make a logo. Yeah. Just look at all the, you, you know, what you do is you go in, and uh, I did the same thing. I just I set up the virtual pub theater battles. This is from a different graphic, but I, I, when I made this graphic, I was like, that's gonna be the logo. Uh, as Stacy okay. says, the story, it's a smartphone, it's booze, it's drama and it's punch, <laughs> you know? So uh, the virtual pub theater battles, okay? Um, again, here's, uh, this is for my website, the Colorado Comedy Show's website, we had to put the event up on the website. So this is size specifically for blog banners and websites. So that's uh, where I came up with the logo. I took a silly little picture and popped it in there. Um, Stacy, I'm gonna try and just demonstrate um, yeah. how like sort of simple this is. Um, if you wanted to create a piece of social media, so to promote, an upcoming show. Uh, so now we kind of cruise through and I look at the templates here along the side, um, food posts, uh, Halloween is coming up. And mm -hmm. so these are uh, the virtual pub theater battles are happening at Halloween. So let's see, Oop, this one seems pretty scary right now. Uh -huh. So, oh, it's got a-, a, a Your audience a, right there. Right, this one's gonna be trouble for uh, Annie. This one is protected. Uh, so uh, Annie would have to pay for this. Ah, uh, boo, paying when you're uh, trying to, you know, do this on a shoestring. So we need, uh, we're gonna search for a keyword and, right. And then, Just going to uh, look at that. So I'm going to put my title in. Gang, I'm going to probably come back to this later. Uh, you know, again, this isn't a lesson in how to do this, but uh, I'm going to show you what I do. I just, you know, click, start my idea, get the title going. I'm going to fix this stuff. Oh, virtual tickets out now. I'm going to leave that. Why not? <laughs> uh, I get real satisfaction out of, out of creating something and, and from beginning to end and seeing the finished product. And I always know I make little tweaks and I know I'm like, oh, that was the last tweak. I got it. Um, yeah. So you'll know. Right. Uh, right. So 7 p.m. There I go. Stacy, can I ask last week and we made a general information sheet? We went over it earlier. How much of this information is located in that general information sheet? It's like a pop quiz. Um, it, it, I'll go over it with you, right? It, it's yeah, it's all in the general information. Section. Title. We yep. wanted to put some ticketing information. We didn't use the one that I wrote because I like yeah. this better. Uh, yeah. You know, it was in the business of trying to make these things cool. Um, <laughs> I want my website. Or, yeah. Once we set up Eventbrite, I can put the ticket link here. Here's mm -hmm. the date and the time. This was the issue. Annie didn't know the date or time, but you follow along in the class. She figures it yeah. out. It's 10, 17 at 7 p.m. Wait till I tell you who's going to host the virtual pub theater battles. Why don't I tell you right now? <gasps> Comics at the bar, Stacey. Uh, Steven. Oh. Uh, 
right? Isn't that going to be fun? Me, Stephen Young, and then Emily. Yes. Is going to be there. Uh, but Steve uh, said he could do it. Uh, Vaughn. I think, oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to try this. That looks. There you go. Even better. Yep. Right. So publish to Facebook. That's a feature you got to pay for. I click to download. Right. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to come back to this later. Um, yeah. What we did, gang, is walk you through how to make a virtual media kit. Okay. Uh, you get what's in a media kit. You need a logo, an event page, graphics, a one page, and an event video. I think I loaded this up. Um, if you have, if you have a minute, can can we try to make a video? Yeah. All right. Let's watch that. Uh, this is a new Canva feature, right? You just want something simple for the Facebook, uh, right? I think I had this going somewhere. Um, just gonna double check. This is gonna help me because I need to do some Facebook ones. So instead of right, hey, this, you need this, this to celebrate, right? So yeah. uh, I'm gonna just choose this one. Um, oh, is it got, uh, I don't know that I like that one anymore. <laughs> uh, let's go here. We're gonna try that one. Uh, breathing exercises for anxiety. So we wanna- That's what the wine is for. Virtual hub theater battles. Uh, I'm even going to do this. I'm going to run over to this other one, see if I can't just, where's my logo? Let's see if I just can't grab these guys and copy paste. Canvas sometimes will let you do that. All right, then I'm going to get rid of this guy. <coughs> get rid of this guy. Gonna get rid of this guy. <laughs> and we're just gonna search the video tab right here. Um, now videos, a uh, lot less of them for free uh, around uh, Canvas. So we, we'll just, let's start here. This one's free. Bam. Hey, cool. All right, totally up to you, like how you wanna uh -huh. add that. Like, what if I wanna do this? Uh, um make it a little bigger All right and then um uh, it plays for 29 seconds oh it has some music uh, i don't know if you can hear that yeah All right uh so i did a, a, bit. a nice chill vibe right it's uh you know maybe annie's like hey, it's terrible music so click on music right uh look what's free um mm -hmm. uh, here's uh right this guy let's play that one. Oh, i don't know how that works uh oh that one charges money terrible terrible bad terrible bad how'd you do that uh yeah epic thoughts wonder if that one's free <laughs> <laughs> looks like it charges money so epically uh, failed uh, not paying for that uh so <laughs> you can see like we make a little event video right so now yeah. uh, look uh in just a couple hours of work so today less than we're at about an hour so i want to wrap up uh the uh, link to canva is right here uh, the stuff that you need to create the one page it's the one thing i haven't showed you yet um uh, get over to here look up a report, right? This is a little trick, uh, media report. Media kit, they got one right here, right? They're eight and a half by 11, look at the media kits. That's, uh, I used to call these electronic press kits, Vaughn, then a Canva called the media kits. And I went, that's it. Like, why would we want to change that at all? Um, so mm -hmm. here's a snappy little design. We're gonna click on it. Um, now you got two pages loaded into there. I'm going to redo the same. You've seen me do this before, right? Virtual hub theater battles. All right. Maybe change the size. Not going to bore you with all that. I'm going to come back and do that another day. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, here I can change the title. I could put more information, right? And then over here on the back side, this is good. They're going to charge me for that. So I want to replace that with something cheap, you know, unless Canva wants to sponsor this type of video and right. 
give someone like Stacy free memberships, we would make videos uh, mm -hmm. you know, and highlight the nice things Canva did for Stacy's wonderful organization. I'll pay. I'll right. buy. Uh, here you can just put your contact information, your social media handles, uh, put tickets and such, make a nice brochure. Um, and maybe it's for, uh, to invite your friends. You can click here for invitation. Uh, so you make an invite, type the word invite here, but a media kit might allow you to present it to, a, a sponsor, a charity, uh, if a youth from Stacy's group is wants to put on a show, well, make a nice proposal. Bring it to Stacy and yeah. show where you're serious with a printed out, uh, you know, fancy brochure, two pages. Wow, that's that's going to be snappy. Um, and so over here, invitation. Maybe you want to look for some invitations, cruise through and check it out. So um, that, my friends, is uh, what I like to call the Canva and uh how to make uh, things like your media kit uh stacy i'm giving away all my secrets is what i'm doing you know what you taught me some secrets i got some ideas just from watching canva for celebrate so thank you right that's the purpose here you know yeah. you put on a terrific event and yeah you'll, you'll raise some money the kids uh, mm -hmm. will get connecting events go right to stacy's website if you want to donate direct if you'd like a cool event where Vaughn is very funny as my, our voiceover artist or improvising, yeah. we've got a corporate training coming up where Vaughn and uh, myself are going to have to lead uh, improv breakout rooms for uh, people oh, from the emergency management team. They're sad as hell. They're, <laughs> they're bummed out. So uh, they've hired us to cheer them up and show them how to stay cheery at work. So, you know. 10% of that will go to Elevating Connections. And um, that's, that's the wrong slide, Stacy. I was done. Um, so uh, I want to thank uh, Stacy and Vaughn for joining us. Go to my website, comedy101.chuckroy.com uh, for more fun and adventure. Uh, Stacy, did you learn anything fun today? It sounds like you did. I did. Um, I do seriously have some ideas that I didn't would not have had for celebrate and a bunch of my other events actually so thank you very much and i just want to say as i i do events all year long this is like what we do we put on all sorts of different events and um i i worry myself sometimes about what the outcome is going to be and every single time it's totally fine um right. so the little things that go wrong are kind of what make it fantastic so, remember the start of this episode? You know, like I was bobbling around and fumbling. And yeah, like, and look at what happened. It was yeah. a great episode. And so, exactly. tuned yeah. you out. Tough luck. But if you stuck here, you saw like that's how virtual events go. We yeah, roll. That's how real events go, or not not real events. This is a real event, but in person events, the same thing. And that's the character, and that's how we learn. But um, when I'm just, I was thinking about um, if I hadn't started elevating connections. Where would we be, Chuck? If you hadn't decided to become uh, an award-winning instructor, <laughs> so many things that wouldn't wouldn't exist for other youth and other comedians and things like that. And Vaughn is using his voice and his talent to to brighten up the world. And so you just take the leap and trust yourself. And so that's what I got tonight. I just would like to say. Nice. So you know, I'm hoping folks are watching and producing their own virtual events or choosing to be a fun player and uh, be part of them. Vaughn, any takeaways or things you'd like to close on? I certainly appreciate you being here today, Vaughn. You, you know, uh, uh, just having one extra person to be able to turn to, especially when uh, the shit was hitting the fan at the start. <laughs> it just helps to know, like, it, I know it didn't become a crisis, but Right. You were here in case uh, I had to leave or whatever. Uh, <laughs> plus, you commented and you know really helped add yeah. to the, the thing. So, anything to close on or anything you took away from today? Uh, I'm very excited to play with Canva a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty for me to, to mess around with there. Um, right. uh, for a comedian, oh, that's you, you know everything for your website, your social media. It's YouTube thumbnails, the thumbnail for this is, you know, created in Canva. Anything else, Vaughn, that 
you would you're thinking already you're going to start creating in canva or looking around no well so i just actually that kind of just gave me like a side thought of uh because like when you play with uh and especially like if you've got younger students or you know when, when you figure out an app like you don't worry too much about making mistakes and there's gonna be in any uh in any endeavors like for comedy for me or like for producing events it's like there's hiccups or like even you know just today you were like oh yeah the beginning we took us a second and then we got back on it it's like there will always be moments of panic uh there will always be like things where you're like wait i didn't know what i was doing it doesn't matter like if you really if you're trying to do something that you love just um just keep practicing and people aren't going to remember you know five years from now people are going to remember oh yeah remember at the beginning of that one video like it took them a full minute to get started like no one's going to care right. you know the, the, you're focus on the value that you have to offer and just keep trying and it's like figuring out an app or it's like um Try not to take it too much more seriously than that. Like you're just going to mess around. You're going to try out the tools. You're going to do something you didn't like. You're just going to undo and try again. Like it's just keep going and don't be afraid to mess around with it. Um, and that's that's kind of a life thing, uh, not just like a Zoom meeting thing. That's yeah. That's something yeah. that I wish I knew as a kid that no one told me. It's like, yeah, dude, you're just going to fail so much. And it's fine. That's fun. Like play with it. Um, yeah. And this this is very much, I think this is very much a good example of that. If you want to produce events, yeah, don't take it seriously, but don't take it too seriously. Uh, you're, you're trying something out. You're learning something new. Don't let yeah. anyone ever make you feel bad about that. That's, that's a beautiful thing. You want yeah. to take it serious enough to sort of honor the guests, the people right. yeah. inviting and make it, you know, show that you've honored the time. But, you, you know, like as a kid, my family, it's like... The, uh, We'd just say, we're going to put on a show. And, you know, my parents would have to sit and watch us as, you know, like we dance with the teddy bears. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it was very white, Stacey, very Cottonwood Drive. Um, oh, I. Can you do? Uh, yeah. And I just. Us too. Yeah. I know that as a teacher, and especially Stacey, like youth in foster care, where maybe they don't have their siblings to be like, okay, you know, like let's put on a show. It also require, revolve, involves somebody else saying, okay. And other people going like, right. we're gonna watch. Uh, and exactly. so we can think that for young people watching this or specifically youth in Stacy's program who might see this, um, you know, uh, we recognize and hopefully you heard today from you know, we're not, I, I we can't replace your sibling or family, but hopefully you heard from us that, okay, you know, we want to see your event. Uh, I believe your friends will want to see your event. So uh, uh, put your idea down and pick a night where you think five, six people are going to show up on a Zoom, charge 10 or, or make it free. You can make your tickets free on Eventbrite. And it just, adds a, a quality of like, it is a show. Look, there's a page. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everybody. I learned a lot from you, Stacy and Vaughn. I learned a lot from you both today. I'm so glad you joined us. Uh, and I'm going to say good night to the YouTube audience. Uh, appreciate you being here. And we'll see you next week.